was talking about the goodness of God. That when his enemies were out to destroy him, that God delivered him out of the hand of his enemies. And he went on to say that the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked even my enemies and foes came up on me to eat my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing that I desire of the Lord, that I may, that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. He shall hide me in the secret place of his tabernacle. He shall set me up on a rock. And now my head shall be lifted above my enemies abound about me. And I will offer sacrifices of joy. I will sing joy. I will sing praises unto the Lord. In the word of God also. One thing have I desired of the Lord. See, so many people want this and they want that. But one thing that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life and behold the beauty of the Lord. Amen. I'm looking out this morning. I got a little thrown off because I see some people that came out to visit some of our visitors. After, when, 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 when I come down uh, after church, we gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to visit young people say, I'm going to holler at you. Amen. I'm going to holler at you. But this, this, thank God. Amen. God is truly, truly good. I, I know the question, is there a word from the Lord? And there is a word from the Lord. If you've got your Bibles with you, if you would go to Hosea, the book of Hosea, one of the minor prophets in the uh, Old Testament, chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 14 through 20. I'll give you a minute. Normally we don't go to the book of Hosea. Amen. All right. Amen. Y'all got it? Amen. 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 The second chapter, starting at verse 14, and the word of God reads, Therefore, behold, I will allure her, and bring her into the wilderness, and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her her vineyards from thence, and the valley of Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there. And as, as in the days of her youth, and as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt, and it shall be at that day, says the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ish, and shall call me no more Balaam. For I will take away the name of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in this and in that day, I will make a covenant with them, with the beasts of the fields, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things upon the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth. And I will make them to lie down safely. And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercy. And I will betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. Yes. If you bear with me, I just want to go back and take a closer look at that 15th uh, verse, uh, the, the, the B part of that, where it says, And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth, and as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt. If you bear with me, I want to talk this morning about hope of a new beginning. Hope of a new beginning. Right where you're at. 
Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We thank you for waking us up and starting us on our way. Lord, we come before you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the anointing that's in this house and upon me, these lips of clay. Lord, asking that you bless me, that I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness. Asking that you think through my mind, speak through my lips, and this word will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force. And we give you all the praise, call it done, fully expecting signs, wonders, and miracles, confirming the word in Jesus' name, amen. Hope for a new beginning. Guess him in the end, and I guess you're going to have to walk with me this morning. Uh, when I looked at this particular text, I said, well, I probably shouldn't preach about this because it doesn't apply to everybody. This sermon this morning is not for everybody. Uh, for those that really know what he's talking about in the scripture, the, the Bible talks about the prophet Hosea. And God told him to go and take an unfaithful wife. Because he, he was using this. You don't go with me, Bishop. He was using this example to say just like the children of Israel has been unfaithful to him. It is just like a wife of whoredom that's unfaithful to her husband. Yeah. And see, the reason I say it's not for everybody. Because see, some people have realized this way back. And you gave your life to God and he turned your life around and you repented of your sins and God has made those things in your life new. But the message this morning is for those that have not repented and turned their life around. You, you see, God wants you to come back to him. And the devil is telling you, don't worry about all that stuff you did. It, it's okay. And then, because see, God will never forgive you of the things that you've done. Now, now I, I want to pause that because I want to tell somebody, y'all, we've all done some things that we're not proud of. Amen. Uh, yeah, that was a little low. Amen. 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 But we've all done some things that we are not proud of. But God has forgiven us of our sins and he's blessed us. And, and, and the message this morning is that everybody goes through. I, I had a note here to tell our young people that listen whenever you meet somebody there's something wrong with them. And you may not be able to see it right off the bat but all of us got some things that, that that's wrong with us. And, and matter of fact, I heard one preacher say, when you go on your first date, you ought to just look at him and say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> look, we all got something. That, see, we got a past, y'all, that, that, that right now we look saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, but we've done some things. I heard a pastor give a, a story about a lady that came to his church, and she had tattoos all over her body. And she said, my former husband did it to me, and he was abusive, and he was an alcoholic, and I went through that. And she said, but I gave my life to God, and now I've got a husband that's saved and sanctified, but, but I still got the scars. And, and some of us know some people like that. They still have the tattoos of life, and, uh, and, and she would have wanted to get them off, but they were burned so deep into her skin that it would just scar her skin up. See, y'all, we've all been through some stuff. And, and God has delivered us and brought us out of some things. We've met people like that, that they've experienced abuse, lived in immorality, acquired addiction. Some women who live uh, through the memory of abortion. And other men who father children out of wedlock and then abandon the children. Now, see, we have some embarrassing things in our life that, that we don't want to share. But when you gave your life to God, he took all of that stuff and he threw it in the sea of forgiveness. See, some of us are uh, trying to rebuild our life like a house that has been destroyed within and without. 
Uh, there was a lady that wrote into a radio, a Christian radio station, and she said, I hope to rebuild from the ground floor, and if possible, not use any of the rotten wood I find around me. This time, I hope to do the maintenance so that it won't be in ruins again. There's hope, this is the message, for a new beginning. When you put all that stuff, all that foolishness behind you. Now, the writer of the text is the prophet Hosea. Hosea prophesied during the reign of King Uzziah and Jotham and Ahaz and uh, King Hezekiah. Uh, the book of, uh, of Hosea points out the destruction of the ten tribes and the fall of uh, Samaria. The story, the prophet Hosea and his wife Gomer. See, he, God compares uh, between an unfaithful wife and unfaithful children of God, Christians. Just like that, and, and when, when you really get into it, when you go home, I recommend that you read it uh, because you'll understand it better that, that, that we really do act like an unfaithful wife toward God But when you really think about it. The, the Bible goes on to say that in this text that God commanded Hosea to marry a woman uh, uh, who was unfaithful in a marriage and caused him many problems. She was unfaithful. And, and God said, I, I want you to marry her. Just as Gomer lost interest in Hosea and ran after other lovers, we too easily lose appreciation for our special relationship with God and pursue dreams and goals that do not include him. When, when we uh, compromise our Christian lifestyle and adopt the ways of the world, we are being unfaithful. God's way of people. God wanted the people in the northern kingdom to turn from their sins and turn and worship in him alone. But they persisted in their wickedness. Throughout the book, Israel is described as ignorant of God who with, uh, with no desire to please him. Israel did not understand God at all, just as Gomer did not understand Hosea. Uh, like a loving husband or a patient father, God wants his people to know him. But more than that, he wants us to trust him every day of our life. Amen. Uh, the story of Hosea and his wife Gomer. Uh, Hosea the prophet is commanded by God mm -hmm. to marry a prostitute. Can we talk about it for a minute? Can you imagine? And, and I, I've done it too. Lord, give me the, the husband that you want me to have. Lord, give me the, the wife. See, we, we say that, but do we really want? Do you really want what God? See, God knows what he's doing. You may, you may get something, but you may not want it. In this particular case, he told him, I want you to marry a prostitute, yeah. the prophet. Yeah. Now, now y'all, that's a lot to take on. Yeah. I would imagine when the Bible said, when, when he came to Hosea, he said, I got you a wife. And I'm sure he got excited. He, 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 he said, Lord, is it Sister Blueberry? That's on the earth board. He said, because I, I can handle that, Lord. Or oh, is it Sister Olive Green that sings in the choir? I said, Lord, now if you do that, if you do that, I can, I, can, I can live with it. But the Lord told him, no. He said, I need you to go to Fifth and Broadway. <laughs> to, Lord, to Fifth and Broadway. He said, Lord, I don't trust you. I'm going to go down there. And he says, that's the one I want you to do. Oh, Lord. I, I can't take her to the minister. Conference band quit. They don't talk about Lord. No, I, Lord, she is a. <laughs> can't go to the women's conference, Bishop. You, you, you can't take her and put her on the front row because everybody knows. But God told him to marry a prostitute. The, the way the Bible says it in Hosea one. 
verse 2. It says, In the beginning, the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take thee a wife of whoredom and children of whoredom, for the land has committed great whoredom departing from the Lord. See, when you really think about it, the Lord was really describing some of us. We, we didn't see it. See, when they first got married, she, she, she went out one, maybe twice a week. You know, then she starts staying out all night long. Then, then the next thing you know, she gone for a month. She gone. But 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 he brings her. Oh Lord Jesus. See, that's the way God does it. See, you can go out and do the lowest thing that you want to do. And God will still forgive you. Oh Lord. I'm talking to somebody this morning. He will still forgive you. The Bible goes on to say that Hosea had two children by this woman. But when we got to the third one that was born, the prophet became painfully aware that the that it wasn't his. Y'all, oh Lord. See, it, it wasn't it wasn't his. How many of y'all, well, Bishop here, I go with these worldly songs. I, I ain't gonna look at Bishop. But, but how many of y'all know when Michael Jackson said, the kid is not myself? The kid is not a bill of genius. You know, y'all know, y'all know, y'all know. But the kid is not my son. And, and, and the Bible says, when he gets down to that fourth verse, and he says, And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jerem. For yet in a little while I will avenge the blood of Jerem upon the house of Jehu, and will cause the cease of the kingdom in the house of Israel. Well, I had to go look it up. So when he said, Call him Jerem. Uh, Jerel is, is, a, is a valley in north central Israel and uh, during this time there was a murderous king by the name of Jehu and he committed murder and, and, and he's saying see this is prophecy he said when you name him Jerel the people gonna know that I'm gonna deal with that situation uh, when I really looked it up and I went back and I did some research in, 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 in 2 Kings, the ninth chapter, you'll find the story of this. But it said when the prophet Elisha was supposed to go and anoint Jehu king of Israel, the Bible said that he sent his servant and he told him when you get there, go in, take him to the inner chamber, pour the bottle of oil on him and anoint him. And then he said, and get out of it. He said, do not tarry. The way the Bible said, do not tarry. This man was, so, he knew he had to anoint him, but he said, mm -mm, but get away from him. I, I know his spirit. The Bible goes on to say, and, and, and she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said, and called her name uh, Lerohah, for I will um, no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. A row of prophetically. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to give these people some things that are going to happen. But the Bible says, when you get down to that eighth verse, he says, Now when she had weaned uh, a low Rahama, she conceived and bare a son. And then God said, Call his name Lo am I. Mm. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Lo am I. See, when you look at that name, this carried the harshest judgment because it seemed to announce the end of Israel's covenant with the relationship with God. See, what he was saying is that just like uh, Hosea, that's not your son, they not my people. See, that, I, I don't know if you've ever felt that way, but there's some things you can do in your life when you walk away from it, you don't feel the spirit of God. On you. you. You know that it has left you. And he said that I, I'm not, I, I am not their God. I am. I am. And, and, and here's what you got to understand. When you look at this, what it translates, well, remember when Moses was going uh, to Egypt and, and he, he said, Lord, I know you said, tell them that you are the father of Abraham. Isaac and Jacob. 
He said, but what is your name? He said, just tell them I am. And see what he said here, I am not your God. You, you got to understand, I, I'm not your God. See, uh, uh, they were flighting from one lover to another, never finding acceptance uh, of fulfillment. She prayed. One day, Lord have mercy, she fell into the hands of a man who was unable to take care of her. The Bible said that Hosea saw her from a distance, distorted, humiliated, without food or clothes, instinctively. He took her some bread, wine, and gave it to her, slow for love. Oh, Lord Jesus. He didn't even give it to her. He gave it to the man that she was with so he could take care of her and, 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 and to, 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 to feed her. The Bible says that her morals had, had slid so far down that she was with one man and he made her a slave and was selling her at auction. The Bible said that Hosea saw her and, and, and me and gawking and pulling at her and all this stuff. And when he looked at her, the Bible said that Hosea went up and he outbid all the men. Said he paid 15 shekels of silver and a bushel and a half of barley. Now, if that was me or him, you know you'd say, are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? What are you doing? See, you got to understand that God is dealing with this man. God, he's doing what the Lord, and that's what happens. Sometimes you're going to find yourself in a situation where you're doing exactly what God is telling you, and it's going to make you look foolish. It's going to make you want to turn around. People are going to talk about you. But see, when you do what God wants you to do, People are going to talk about you. They're going to they make jokes about you. But, but see, what he saw was God can fix this. Oh, yeah. no, no matter what you go through, he was saying it, 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 it's a new beginning. No matter how far we stray away from God, some of us have done some things that we are ashamed of. Yeah, yeah. You know, some of us have done some things that we can't even say out of our own mm -hmm mouth, let alone to another person. And what had inspired such a hope in this prophet, Hosea was convinced that if this thing could start again. See, God, man, it, 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 it's going to work out. We can fix it. It's going to work. The Bible says that God himself gave Hosea, uh, gave hope to him when he said, therefore, and this is how we get into the text. He says, therefore, I will allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her. See, what God was promising is that I'll bring her to a desert place. I'll bring her where there's no distractions around me, there people not talking in her ear. So he could clearly communicate with her. And he could say, I could change this whole situation. What had been a time of difficulty in the day, I can turn that whole thing around. Because when he gets into the 15th verse, and he said, and I will give her her vineyards from this, and the valley of Acorn will for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. Did you catch that? Just like it was when she was a little child. I, I could make it that way. And as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt, he's talking about the children of Israel. Yeah, you, some of you may remember a couple weeks ago I preached a sermon and I gave this same example that God can move in your life so much that he can just clean you up and people will never know what kind of life you live before you gave your life to God. I, I told you about this lady at this church. She sung like an angel. You, when, you would just, when she would sing, you would just sit there mesmerized. And I told you that uh, one Sunday I went in and somebody said she passed away. She, because she had drug problems and different. But when you saw it, you would have never known that. See what God can do. He can take your whole life and he can turn it around. This story right here, what he's saying is that, Hosea, I can take this woman. 
Her, her marriage vows will be reinstated and she will live in purity and faithfully committed to her husband. And it shall be in at, uh, be at that day, says the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ish and shall not call me Bailai. I, I looked that up. Ish is the Hebrew word for husband. That you will call me husband uh, again. And that's what God is saying. That you, one day you're going to come to him and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I'm sorry for all of you. Lord, I thank you. Yeah, but that day is coming. And, and he goes on to say, For I will take away the name of Balaam out of their mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by that name. And in that day I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things upon the ground, and I will break the bow and the sword. In the battle out of the earth, and I will take away, uh, and they will lay down in safety. The time will come when unfaithfulness will be impossible. You won't even think about doing things that you used to do. God will bind us to himself in the perfect righteousness, justice, love, compassion, faithfulness. He, he says, I will be trolling in Hosea's day. Uh, the word patrol in Hosea's day simply mean uh, it, was a, it was a binding agreement, a deep commitment, and a permanent relationship. God was promising a fresh new beginning. Eventually, she would be almost as though she had never sinned in her life. Yet, she would sing again. She would stop running and come home where she belongs. Spiritually speaking, her virginity would be restored. Now, I'm not saying that the book of Hosea was written to give us an example of how a husband should treat his wife. No, 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 because y'all know a lot of us wouldn't go, even with the relationship way we have with God. When she go out the first time, she ain't coming back in. I got some stories and examples that I can tell you about, but I don't need that long. Let it go. Stay in the word. That God, stay in the word. God only knows how many people, if you would, if you would, if you would just listen to God in your marriage, He'll save it. He'll build it up. He'll give you everything. But you gotta live the way God wants you to live. God loves to save great sinners, no matter how deep or how dark your valley. There is always a path that leads. Uh, out. Anyone can begin again. I don't care what somebody's rather, what, let me take, no, don't worry about what you have done. God can take that and just throw it. The devil wants you to remember it. But God says, no, just bring, come to me just as you are without one plea. The apostle Paul wanted us to know that. He said there has been there has no temptation taken you but such that is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer thee to be tempted above that ye are able. But he will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear. See, you got to know, you're not the only one that's going through this struggle. See, somebody else deals with alcoholism, child abuse, divorce, gluttony. Somebody else deals with abortion, homosexuality, sexual addiction, now drug addiction. See, but it is common to man because everybody goes through it. Some people are greater sinners than others, and some have been sinned against in greater ways. But we all have the same human nature. Of course, we don't mean to imply that what has happened to you is not serious. But here's the thing, just because it happened to others too, no, no, that's not what, what we're saying. The fact, uh, uh, the fact that emotional and spiritual hurts are common does not make them less painful. One of the things is that Satan almost, he wraps a chain around you and he said, this is what you got to live with. But no, 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 that's not what you got to live with. God said, if you come to me, I'll take away all the cares of this world. Oh, ye that labor and are heavy labor, come unto me and I will give you rest. God says, all you got to do is trust in me. Come into my presence. Believe that I can do what you need me to do. See, some people have been low and they didn't 
know what to do. But the Bible tells you when you as low as you can get, and all you can do is look up, well, look up and call on the man of God. And I don't care what you're going through, what you're dealing with, God will bring you out. All you gotta do is make up in your mind, I'm coming out of this. I don't care what the situation is. Lord, I will live down here long enough. Lord, I need you to just pick me up out the mile and face. When you make up in your mind, the Bible says that the prodigal son, he was in the whole pen and he was about to eat the hook. But he said, wait a minute, in my father's house, the son has got plenty to eat and to spare. He said, I know what I'll do. I'll go to my father. And I'll tell the father, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But take me, Lord, one of your father.
We just want to remind you that we'll be in our prayer call this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. And then again on Friday morning at 6 a.m. And then back here next Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Amen. As we pray out, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for all of those that are watching us on live stream. We thank you for their spirit, Lord. Just touch right now. Let them know right now, Lord, deep down in their heart that there is hope for a new beginning. In Jesus' name.